Good evening and welcome to the show. And for those of you watching on video, congratulations for having something to better to do on the Friday night. I could have done that better, but I don't think I'll bother. Uh, in the news this week, <laughs> after... Do you think so? Um... <laughs> Go on, start again. Um... <laughs> Just for a laugh. <laughs> in Leicester, a passing policeman spots Jeremy Beadle outside a bar. There's a problem at the Horse of the Year show, as one of the favourites accidentally swallows a pogo stick. <laughs> and as sanctions begin to bite, the Iraqi army admits that constipation is becoming a major problem. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team is a much-loved, brilliant and talented, handsome and youthful songwriter who wrote the words to Evita, Chess and this introduction, Tim Rice. <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight, a man who, after leaving school, went on to run his father's garden gnome business, whilst his younger brother went on to become Prime Minister of Britain. Apparently John Major's still bitter about it. <laughs> Terry Major Ball. <laughs> Before we begin, we've received a communication from lawyers representing Ernest Saunders, the former Guinness chairman. Uh, who have asked for it to be made clear that according to expert medical opinion, there was no possibility of Mr Saunders having faked the symptoms of senility, which accompanied his surprisingly early release from prison for theft, and from which he later unexpectedly recovered. A clarification we're all too happy to assist in. We're also all too happy to remind everyone that Ernest Saunders was a complete crook. <laughs> and a uh, cheap con artist who cheated thousands of innocent people. <laughs> Out of money that was uh, rightfully theirs. I hope, uh, hope that's cleared everything up. <laughs> so, um, so we trip the light fandango into our opening uh, film round. Ian and Tim, what's this uh, suddenly in the news this week? Oh, go with the peacekeeping force. Jules Holland there. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly mass murderer just there, and then someone famous his brother. Who's uh, <laughs> <laughs> that? And then oh, it looks like. Um, it's a tank, Ian. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> the British Army hasn't had a tank for so long. Not what it looked like. Well, this is Bosnia, of course. Oh, I thought tanks had tops on, though, you know. Surely it's an armoured personnel carrier or something. Mm. I don't well, want to be I'm picky, I'm very Ian. glad you said that, Jerry. I don't want to be picky, Ian, but, you know, mm. get it right. Mm. What was the question? <laughs> uh, it's, uh... Is that what you say to your brother most evenings? <laughs> Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays. Right. Hasn't had any effect there, has it? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's um, an ultimatum. We've said to the Serbs that um, if they don't behave, then, you know, we'll, we'll jolly well withdraw. Mm. <laughs> and they're pretty scared. Mm. The Daily Express has added its weight to the argument, exploring the crucial issue of whether or not to withdraw troops by eliciting the vital opinion of Pete <laughs> Murray. <laughs> Um, who uh, incidentally said that uh, we should give it another week, watch the situation, and here's Black Lace with Agadoo. <laughs> That's more or less Douglas Hurd's line. <laughs> <laughs> the Sun, for its part, uh, has focused on the most critical element in the war for them, the arrival of the 62 Triple H-breasted model Pandora Peaks, specially flown over to do her bit for Bosnia. Still, she can't be any less effective than David Owen. She'll never uh, drown. No, that's true. She'll do a lot of damage if she explodes, though. <laughs> uh, Paul and Terry, an odd couple for you. Uh, the Sunday Times causes earache. <laughs> she causes headaches. Uh, Tony Blair changing the name to the Tory party. That'll get us in, he thinks. Uh, Hugh Gates will have a bad time on Blind Date. <laughs> And uh, Mr. Thatcher returns a pound, John Major saying, well, I'll be off then. Oh, I, th <laughs> I thought she was picking his pocket. And Tony Blair saying it's good news for Britain. Are you sure she wasn't picking she his pocket then? Can we have a yeah. look at it again? Yes. Um, <laughs> see if Margaret Thatcher is Thatcher... picking John Major's pocket. Look well, it's never been done before, but I don't see why we can't. <laughs> have a look at that bit of film again, yeah. just to see whether she's picking his pocket. 
Now, here we go. Where's the... Um, here it comes. It's coming up. Well, yeah, she's at it. See? She's at it. <laughs> He had his wallet, didn't she? Obviously, yeah. the book's not doing that well. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> what, uh, what is the news story? The well, she's, she's bringing out her memoirs mm. in which she sort of says John Major is useless and Tony Blair's the best Labour leader since Hugh it's Gates. It's a sort Gale. of love story. Mm. Do you think it's any way a, a slur on your brother, the way in which she's um, being so complimentary about Tony Blair? I haven't got a brother. <laughs> So if I did, it would be a slur. A slur. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just wanted to check that out. Yeah. Um, well, it's, a fair, it's a fair question, isn't it? Uh, I only wish I had an equally good answer. Mm. Um, what about, yes, she's a silly cow? <laughs> well, no, I would never say that about any lady. But Mrs Thatcher? Uh, <laughs> no, you're trying to trap the Angus. Mm. I think we'll avoid that one. OK. Yeah. We'll, so neatly start we'll ignore step. him, shall yeah. we? Yes. Well, right. we could. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, think we should, I think we should play records. Yes. <laughs> Chat amongst yeah, ourselves. Yeah, that's what like, people want. We're a good chat. It's all they want. Yes. You could talk about that new magazine that's come out in opposition to Private Eye. That's right, we, yeah. You know? Oops, sorry. <laughs> God. No one's heard of it, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> no, Private Eye, it's a magazine. You must have seen it. <laughs> Jokes about Edward Heath being a grocer, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It used to cost 90 pence when, uh, when, it was mm, when he was a boy, but it's a pound now. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. when yes. I stopped buying it. That's when it went up to a pound. Yeah. Oh, really? I still read it, but I go into Smith's. Yeah. And, it? It. and it takes 10 minutes, <laughs> yeah. doesn't it? You can photocopy it for less than a pound, That's actually. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ian and Tim, another highly respected uh, elder statesman for you. Well, this is uh, David Lord Such, and that's a bank, and he's gone broke. Well, he gets made bankrupt, he can't stand, that's right, isn't it? Well, I think it would be a great tragedy for the nation if yeah. he was. He's, he's a great up. bloke, actually, Lord Such. Mm. I, I've met him on a couple of occasions, and he's... Are you uh, a member of his party? Pardon? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he does a great song with his hat on, on he fire. He does a terrible song with his hat. A great song with his hat on fire. I don't argue with him. He probably knows if it's a good song or not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is the uh, threatened extinction of the uh, monster raving loony party after its leader, Screaming Lord Such, announced that he is facing financial ruin. Uh, Such has promised that if he does become Prime Minister, Ken Dodd will be asked to become Chancellor of the Exchequer and Frank Bruno will be Education Secretary. Uh, he hasn't announced who the Foreign Secretary would be, but Douglas Hurd must be in with a shout. <laughs> uh, Paul and Terry, the latest sleaze story for you. Um, well, uh, well it's not another program you're presenting, is it, Angus? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, there's a sign there for naughty drinks. What's That's a naughty drink? Naughty Split drink. crotch Pepsi or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Peephole Kiora. <laughs> I suppose it depends where you put the straw. Well, this no. is um, <laughs> Westminster Council. Their yes. job is to go round and make sure that there's no sort of sex being offered in these massage places, these massage parlours, and they visited one such establishment to make sure that no sex was on offer 18 times. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you mention the name of it? No, I didn't mention the name of it, no. no okay. Major Rons. <laughs> <laughs> It's West this one experience. There's a particularly good one around the offices of the Eye um, that got caught recently. It says, you know, naughty girls come inside. And you go inside and a very large bloke hits you over the head and nicks your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> and he got the idea off Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Is that the club tie? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Council Licensing Director uh, David Chambers said we had to pay 18 visits to make it stand up in court. <laughs> Mr. Chambers is now available for pantomimes and private parties. <laughs> and so, uh, at the end of this uh, first round, the scores are like a Tory backbencher in bed, with four on either side. <laughs> Before tasting the delights of round two, let's take our first tentative nibble at what will become our caption competition. Ian and Tim, this will be yours. <laughs> Paul and Terry, this is yours. And so we welcome, with open arms and closed minds, our once popular What Happened Next round. Two bits of film cut off in their prime. What historic event followed? 
Paul and Terry, a divine moment. Get the doves, get the doves. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the dove, he throws the dove up and it circles around St. Peter's Square, lands back on, its head, on his head, it's got these sticky feet and it's stuck there. And he has to wear that large hat for several months to disguise the fact that he's got a dove stuck to his head. <laughs> and every time he walks past a nun, people hear the city of the Pope going, coo. <laughs> Um, is that your answer then? Oh, I think I think it's it's all to do with the doves and uh, and uh, <laughs> it's, you know there's doves in it somewhere. Yes, and yes. I produces a handkerchief and more doves appear. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's either that or something to do with sewage. You know something they left. <laughs> right. So doves or sewage? You've, yeah. You've yeah, narrowed yeah, it down. Yeah, to we those we two. think it's one of those yeah. two. Yes. Um, okay. Let's have a look at what in fact did happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> that was uh, that was the papal dove or uh, or pigeon, as these doves uh, tend to be in reality, uh, homing back to its master after an extremely short trip indeed. The birds were in fact white pigeons, a creature unique in its symbolic significance to Catholics for its grace, docility, and the fact that one couple can breed a family of sixty-four in a single summer. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Tim, an international incident for you. It's Clinton. Yes, after this, somebody pointed out that he hadn't taken the lens covers off his binoculars. And he, these, these were removed. And then he said, who's that amazing-looking broad on the beach? <laughs> 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 this is D-Day. D-Day? During the war? No, D-Day... <laughs> D-Day 50 years later. Oh, right. But that's not what happened next. That's what happened 50 years ago. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, uh, let's have a look and see what did happen next. <laughs> Spot on. A knighthood. A knighthood. <laughs> it was uh, Commander-in-Chief Bill Clinton at uh, the border between North and South Korea. Clinton made a number of serious breaches of protocol at a dinner held in his honour by the Koreans. Uh, he addressed the Korean president's wife by the wrong title. He invited an interpreter to sit in the wrong seat. And worst of all, he told his main course to sit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Clinton is the uh, first president since uh, Richard Tricky Dicky Nixon to acquire a popular nickname with the American public. He's called Slick Willie. Uh, slick uh, <laughs> referring to his famously coiffured hairstyle and Willie, of course, referring to an affectionate term for Bill. Uh, <laughs> which is what he calls his penis. <laughs> That's a bit awkward for his wife, then if the maid shouts out, there's another bill just come through the letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's urgent, it's red. <laughs> Does John have a nickname for, um, for himself? Um, I don't really know, we've never discussed it. Um, <laughs> all of which... surname like Major Ball, you just... Don't bother, really. <laughs> Perhaps they um, call him Bouncer. Well, well they can put the word sup on the end of it. Think Ball, you Major know. Ball Sup. <laughs> <laughs> All of which stuff and nonsense signals the end of our second place round, and at this stage, the wooden spoon uh, looks as if it's going to neither team, because they're both failing equally, neither <laughs> uh, being able to progress further than six. <laughs> Uh, time now for... Uh... <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, just saying no. he wish you'd speed it up a bit. The pub's shut at ten. <laughs> that'll, uh, that'll work well at quarter past ten. Oh. <laughs> when it goes out. <laughs> Time now for uh, something that's odd, out, and of which there's only one. Yes, it's our missing words round. Uh, sorry, no, our odd one out round. Uh, for sporting achievers, which one's the Ivory Coast? Paul, your, um, your multinational assortment contains Columbus Taylor, Snoop Doggy Dog, Yusuf Islam, and John Major. Oh, well, um, Yusef used to be Cat Stevens, as we know. There's him in his sort of 60s heyday. He, he, he released a record called something like Tim or the exact title, something like I'm going to get me a gun. Or no, like, he had one called was it, I Love My Dog, which I, he's got a dog I Love there, My so Dog, but there was one about a gun as well. I'm yeah, gonna... but he wouldn't be promoting that one with a dog, would he? He'd be no. more likely to be promoting Well, he might be a dog he doesn't want. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> They're all singers Broken except the baby. Magic. What are John's hits? <laughs> oh, it's, uh, wish me luck as you wave me goodbye. <laughs> No, I think it's got to be something about changing names or something, because Cat Stevens has changed his name at least twice, hasn't he? Because he wasn't born Cat Stevens. Uh, and John Major, well, there's this controversy. I don't know whether he actually did change his name from Major Ball or whatever, but if he did, no, he would not He didn't no. change his name. No, Your brother must have changed his name. No, no, no. How come, we well, got how come names? you're called Terry Major Ball, without the sup? <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and he's called, hey you, why don't you resign? Uh, well, it's, it's, all, it's all to do with what the father, father signs on the birth certificate. The ink was running out the time he got round mm. to John and he only got as far as Major mm. and when he signed it and left the ball off, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he dropped the ball? He dropped, it, he, he dropped the ball, yes. Was this forgetfulness or...? Uh... No, he didn't uh, run out of his pen. Right. He didn't run out of his pen. It happens every it day. He does no, it? It's a waste of time, really. Yeah. Stick his right, picture, no, just, that one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue, if you like, which is... Mm, I will. Uh, <laughs> it's Gene Kieran's. Uh, Who's we... Gene Kieran's? Well, it's a name that should mean something to Terry. Yeah, she's... Um... The only thing it means to me is that she's my... Um... My daughter's godmother. Mm. And she had an affair with someone? No, not, not according to Terry. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we say, should we say your brother's the odd one out? Yes, we'll say he's the odd one out, yeah. definitely. No, oh, we're completely wrong. No, it's Gene Kieran's. Uh, Gene Kieran's isn't actually one of the four, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> That's her when she was very young. Mm, no, it isn't. Um, and after taking some pills. You need some pills. <laughs> uh, it's that all of them have been named at some stage in their lives after a dog, uh, with the exception of Yusuf Islam, uh, who, as we know, was named after a cat. Uh, Columbus uh, Taylor, 23rd in line to the throne, got his name from Lady Helen Taylor's childhood Labrador. Not that it's uh, uncommon for members of the royal family to be given dogs' names. For centuries, the sons of reigning monarchs have been called Prince. <laughs> John Major was given the nickname Rover by, uh, by his lover, Jean Kierans, uh, during their affair in the 60s. Uh, she later said that she would have gone out with his older brother, Terry, but uh, apparently she was more attracted to the wild, rebellious one in the family. <laughs> uh, Terry, the uh, stuff of legends for you. Mrs Thatcher. Lord oh, she's a novelist, isn't she? Well done. Lord Nelson, uh, the Bastille, and Huey P. Long. One ought to be in the Bastille. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the honest answer is I haven't a clue. Um, Only one of them had an affair with Lady Hamilton. Which was the Bastille. <laughs> <laughs> she went for the turrets, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> the Bastille's the odd one out. Yeah. Um, Next question. <laughs> is, uh, is it Chubby Checker? It's a strange feeling of deja vu. Um, it's the I thought you'd say that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the answer. is that All of them have uh, days named after them uh, in various parts of the world, except for Lord Nelson, uh, who is the subject of a campaign to have a bank holiday named after his victory at Trafalgar. Uh, Margaret Thatcher Day is a public holiday in the Falklands, uh, when the pubs are full, the beer's flowing, and the sheep are just slightly apprehensive. <laughs> Uh, Bastille Day commemorates the occasion when a gang of French shopkeepers managed to break into the most heavily fortified prison in France, which was a blow for the security firm who'd just taken over there, Le Groupe Catra. <laughs> uh, Tim, your four pillocks of the establishment are uh, Winston Churchill MP, Tom King MP, the Prince of Wales, and Ernest Saunders. <laughs> Uh, it's a sporting question. Sporting question. Oh, well, mm. Tom King is a very good cricketer, captain of the Lords and Commons cricket team. Mm -hmm. uh, Prince Charles... And the others aren't. Yes. Mm. Uh, <laughs> is Ernest Saunders, Ernest Saunders the only one who has flashing letters in front of him that makes it difficult for him to meet new people? <laughs> 
Prince of Wales, quite a sporting chap. Where is he? Looks like he's in an Egyptian lavatory. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Those hieroglyphics say, now wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I will, uh, at a pinch, I suppose, give uh, one to Paul for saying uh, Ernest Saunders, because the answer is that they're all in the houses of uh, Parliament's ski team, uh, apart from Ernest Saunders, uh, who, of course, couldn't, uh, couldn't even contemplate such an energetic pursuit, having only recently recovered from a debilitating illness, as this photograph clearly shows. <laughs> Uh, Prince Charles is eligible by virtue of being a member of the House of Lords and came second in the slalom race, the first and third naturally being the two bodyguards escorting him. <laughs> and uh, finally in this round, Ian, Princess Diana, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Geoffrey Archer and Paul Merton. I was very ill that day. <laughs> She's actually taken from the Sunday so Mirror magazine. It's one you've given him here, isn't it? I think this is a, a bodybuilding question. Um, the odd one out is obvious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unless you count um, bodybuilding the Pavarotti way. <laughs> this is a bit difficult to take from a bald-headed short ass. <laughs> Good to see that legendary repartee in action. <laughs> you started it. Cleverest man in England. <laughs> Bald headed short ass. <laughs> you know your name. <laughs> 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 You're <all> right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is about people who go to gyms to build up their body. Princess Di goes well, to. Well, don't you think I've got that neck? <laughs> <laughs> the Princess of Wales goes to the Harbour Club, this gym, and, and um, uh, builds up her body. And Geoffrey Archer um, was also a bodybuilder. This is one of his other careers. Um, he, there's this biography just come out, and it's revealed that Archer got a place at Oxford um, on the grounds that he already had a degree. And he said he had a degree in physical education from an American university. And it turned out he'd sent away to a newspaper ad and he'd got a degree in the Charles Atlas School of Bodybuilding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to put the record absolutely straight, Ian, uh, Geoffrey Archer got into Oxford University partly on the strength of a letter sent by his employers, Dover College, claiming that he was a fellow of the International Federation of Physical Culture at the University of California. Uh, Archer had indeed joined the International Federation of Physical Culture, but it wasn't so much a degree course as a bodybuilding course advertised in titbits. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, tissue of Archer's uh, heralds the end of this penultimate round, and the story so far is that Paul and Terry have a puny seven, whereas Ian and Tim ha boast a muscle-bound nine. Mm. Uh, and so to the organised chaos that is our final Missing Words round, our guest publication, uh, from which one or two headlines with any luck won't be taken, is the unmissable Public Hygiene Quarterly. <laughs> so, English judges are whatest in Europe? Sexiest. <laughs> Hardest. Bestest. Uh, best. <laughs> best. <laughs> no, harshest uh, is the right harshest. answer. Uh, I don't next... suppose Alice Saunders thinks so. <laughs> but do you think so, Ian? Well, I just... <laughs> Your lips are sealed, obviously. Right. Uh, say what to blocked urinals? Not today, uh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know the answer, but I think it begins with B, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Say goodbye to blocked urinals. Say goodbye and never worry again. Is absolutely right. Goodbye forever <laughs> to <laughs> blocked urinals. Uh, next, what is getting tight, says Fergie. Pool C in the Rugby World Cup. It was <laughs> obviously accurate, Tim, but uh, not the right answer. Shell suit. <laughs> it's just um, money, isn't it? Money is getting tight, says Fergie, uh, which she confessed as she returned from Bermuda this week. Um, <laughs> next, why what is like a hamster? Um, and Dizzy Gillespie. Gillespie. Dizzy Gillespie is part of a riddle. Why Diz Dizzy Gillespie is like a hamster? They can both puff their cheeks out. <laughs> it's a Christmas riddle in a cracker. Uh, why a guinea pig? Michael Winner. Uh, <laughs> No, you just heard me say Michael. Michael Jackson. Uh, 
Uh, no, not Michael Jackson. Michael, Michael Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this could take a while. Michael um, Heseltine. Is the right answer. Well done. <laughs> And finally, what ate my undies? Michael Winner. <laughs> uh, crabs? Thought. No. Crabs? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lovely image, Tim. Well, Thank you. Decor? Uh, decor. <laughs> Dust is, in fact, a rather curious answer. Mm. Uh, which verbal blind man's buff uh, brings us to the end of both the round and the contest, the uh, mm, result of which cool. is that this week's garden gnomes are Ian and Tim with 12, whilst this week's laughing gnomes are Paul and Terry with 14. So our winners join the Premier League, our losers join the Human League. Uh, but, uh, before they leave us, they must first negotiate the final hurdle that is our caption competition. Paul and Terry. Oh, no. oh God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, world record attempt for number of cones on head unexpectedly stops earlier <laughs> than expected. Um, British cool Space Project. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. New, new Ku Klux Klan milliner fails audition. <laughs> Ian and Tim. Oh, my long lost son. <laughs> I'm not sure who was saying that, but... Uh, <laughs> thank you. Only uh, two entries for Mrs Thatcher lookalike competition. <laughs> A man with very large penis stands at the back of the room. <laughs> It could happen. It could That's happen. my fear. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's... <laughs> and the bloke who's, who's got the little blue book to the right said, so there's no need for that, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> and the bloke in the glasses and the little lapel thing there is saying, I could rest me beer on that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all too plausible. And I leave you with news that at the important American land rights conference, disaster strikes for Chief Sitting Bull when the wind suddenly changes direction. <laughs> in Lincolnshire, uh, British Telecom investigates reports that rhinos have begun nesting up telegraph poles. <laughs> and the Swedish parliamentary ski team limbers up for the Winter Olympics. <laughs> Good night.